or photography. These are all really important to me. Um, so I'm going to be asking you guys a series of questions as well. Okay, so first and foremost, um, I wanted to talk today about how to price your photography. And a lot of photographers, you know, it's it's a kind of this mystery. How do I price it? And a lot of photography, a lot of photographers tend to do it based upon what they consider is a fair market value in their area, in their local area. And I hear this all the time, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm I'm a photographer in, you know, in Kansas, or I'm a photographer in Chicago, or a photographer in, you know, up in Portland, Oregon, and I have, you know, this is what uh, the, the area charges. This is what the other, you know, 10 photographers in my area that are on Google, they're charging this amount. So I'm basing mine upon that, and maybe I'm undercutting them. I hear that a lot. Now, I'm here to tell you, let's not do that. I think that if we're trying to undercut other photographers, it's essentially just a race to the bottom. And I'm here as an advocate for you, an advocate for photographers, because it's my goal to completely transform the photographic industry so that I can empower photographers to make more money, essentially educating your clients in the true value of your photography and why they should charge, uh, why you can charge more, they should invest more in you. It's very important to me. And I think that a lot of times, of course, everybody's trying to get a good deal, um, especially if you're dealing with consumer market, meaning portraits and weddings, and you're dealing with people directly, oftentimes they're going to spend obviously as little money as possible to get the best quality as possible. And oftentimes photographers uh, fall victim to that. You essentially will give away your amazing services and provide incredible photographic quality and services to clients, and they're not going to pay you what you deserve. But I'm here to tell you, it's kind of your own fault, because unless you guys hold strong, hold firm, price yourself accordingly, and demand a high price and a high ticket of what you deserve as a photographer, if, unless you do that, you're not going to get it. You're going to get just what they're willing to offer or what they're, you know, the, the lowest common denominator. No. Okay. Pricing your photography also does come down to essentially how known are you? How well known are you? You know, does everyone know you in the area? Are you SEO'd on Google? Are you a an award-winning photographer? Are you a published photographer? These all come into play when pricing your photography. And all of this comes down to what I would call valuation and your value as a photographer. Now, if you're just a local photographer, maybe never been published before, and that's something that, uh, you know, you guys may or may not have been published or may have may, may not have won awards. Oftentimes, a lot of photographers, you know, you might not feel like you deserve to charge $10,000 to do a wedding. Or maybe you don't deserve to charge $100,000 to do a commercial advertising campaign. But I'm here to tell you, it's not really what you feel like you deserve. It's what you truly deserve as a photographer and what the market rates truly are. So to give you guys some perspective, if you're a wedding photographer, I want you guys to think about pricing yourself as a wedding photographer. I, I meet a lot of wedding photographers and, you know, they're charging $2,000 to shoot a wedding. Okay. Um, and I'm here to tell you, you guys are literally giving away your services for free. Because at the end of the day, between all the preparation for that wedding, if you are um, meeting with the clients, you're doing, say, engagement pictures in your package, you're, um, you know, you're, you're dealing with the clients on a regular basis, uh, and maybe the wedding planner leading up to the wedding, then at the wedding all day long, you probably have a second shooter, maybe you have a videographer, maybe you have other, other costs involved with that, you're also photographing the ceremony, you're photographing the couples and all the setup shots between the ceremony and reception, then you're photographing the reception. And it's this long, long drawn out day. It's a tremendous amount of pictures that you're going to have to call through at the end. And then at the end of that, you're going to have to go through the images and you're going to have to select the best ones, usually retouch them, put them into say an album that is included in your package. At the end of the day, the amount of countless hours a photographer spends on a wedding you know, it could be when you, when you take into all consideration leading up to the wedding, the wedding itself, and then post-production after the wedding and orders, it's probably 30 hours of time, if not more, sometimes even 40 hours between all of the time. And when you take that into account and you're just charging, you know, a couple grand to do the wedding, and then say, if you also have costs of a, a second shooter or something, a lot of photographers are barely making the minimum wage at the end of the day. So I'm here to tell you guys, you got to price yourself what you deserve. 
and what the true market value is, because it's a lot more than you think it is. You know, I would suggest that it depends on your area, of course, like if you're in rural Idaho, it's going to have a different pricing structure than if you're in Manhattan or New York. However, you don't necessarily have to work as a local Idaho photographer. You could work as a national brand. And you could still do destination weddings. You could go and you know shoot as a photographer in New York. You could shoot as a photographer in Beverly Hills. You could shoot as a photographer um, overseas in France, for instance. You know, there's all kinds of opportunities. In fact, you know, I mean, many of you guys know because you you follow me um, uh, through everything we do. Uh, but you know, I also happen to own a, a luxury wedding venue. I own a 49 room 13th century castle in France, and we do ultra luxury weddings at my castle in France. So at my castle, um, you know, we're, we're having high-end weddings where our photographers are making anywhere from 15 to $20,000 as the hired photographer to do that high-end wedding photography. And they also get to come to a castle. They get to photograph, you know, unbelievable content um, with, you know, spectacular production, incredible um, venue. And, um, and everything is really, really high-end. This is the kind of stuff that if I was a wedding photographer, I would recommend you guys include in your body of work, in your portfolio, not only the photographic content, but also the video content, just like you're watching right now, showcasing value to justify the pricing. Very important. And a lot of photographers don't do this. You know, you might be shooting for 20 or 30 or 40 years and you think, oh, well, you know, I've been shooting a long time. My experience says it all. I've got, you know, referrals and people know me and blah, blah, blah. None of that matters. That's irrelevant. In fact, the older you are and the more that you've been shooting and the more experience you have, the more detrimental that is to your brand. Trust me. I've been in this industry a long time, and I can tell you if you tell a customer, especially if you're doing a commercial client client campaign, and you tell you know a big advertising agency, or you know when I shoot for Burberry because I, I shoot for Burberry and Giorgio Armani, if I told you know Burberry, oh, I've been shooting for you know 20 years, they would be less interested in working with me because like oh, it means you're stale, it means you're old, it means you're not in right now. So, you know, consumer clients is a little bit different, but overall, even the super high-end consumer clients, they're not wanting the old deadwood. They want somebody that's fresh, that's in, that's relevant, and ideally somebody who's published and award-winning. That's going to be a lot more interesting to a high-end client that's paying a photographer, say, $15,000 to shoot their wedding photography. So I want you guys to start thinking about their wedding photography, you know, so say if you're a wedding photographer, think about how to price your structure, how your pricing structure is going to work. I recommend offering, say, three packages. So, you know, I would say if you're in a lower tier market, like a more rural market or a market that's not a, you know, it's not Beverly Hills, Manhattan, New York, you know, th these areas, I would say bottom of the barrel, I would charge 5,000 to do a wedding and on the top end around 10,000. So if you can go between 5,000 and 10,000, say you have a $5,000 package, a $7,500 package, a $10,000 package, and you could come somewhere in that range and say, you know, on average, you know, everybody chooses the middle range on average. So $7,500, $7,500 is a very fair amount for you to be rewarded as a wedding photographer. Now, how do I justify that? Especially if you're only making a couple thousand dollars before for wedding, you justify it with quality. You justify it with value. And there's a direct correlation with pricing and value. And when I say value, I mean adding more value to the client. What do you bring to the table? Are you an award-winning photographer? Are you a published photographer? Do you have content that looks like this? If you're, for instance, a wedding photographer. Are you somebody that can add more? Maybe you also shoot video. Can you do include video? You know, Can you include social posts? Can you include you know, a, an engagement fashion story leading up to the wedding, maybe even a published fashion story. That's a whole nother package. I mean, that's something that's hot right now. Not only shooting uh, an engagement pictures, but maybe you're doing a full scale, high fashion engagement story that you could even submit to get published. So that now the bride and groom, you know, they're seeing it as publicity and they're important and they're being published in a magazine and all of that. I mean, I, that, that's one option. You know, I mean, I, I personally did that. Um, and I, I think it's really important that way you can get published. It's really, really valuable. 
So I, I, anyway, so all these ideas are to increase the value that you guys have as a photographer that can lead to increasing prices and justifying the price increase. Because of course, a lot of photographers get a little worried. Well, you know, yeah, this is great and all, Kevin, you're talking about these, you know, crazy $10,000 or $15,000 pricing for a wedding, but you know, how do I do that? How do I justify that to my clients? Well, I'm telling you, to make money in photography, you need to justify it by showing value, showing quality, and allowing your customers to fall in love with the high-level production and quality that you represent. Okay, really, really important. Okay, um, now, uh, and, and by the way, guys, the, the website I'm showing you guys, this is our brand. This is photographyworkshopseries.com. And, you know, this is an example of adding value. For instance, this was shot on location at our New York fashion experience, shooting with supermodels that have been Harper's Bazaar, been in Vogue. We're shooting with um, a fashion stylist from Vogue. We're shooting with um, Louis Vuitton wardrobe, completely over the top. And if you're a fashion photographer, this is a great way to add value by creating a body of work, a photographic portfolio and a video uh, reel that can add value to you and your fashion brand. So again, now we're talking about pricing for, say, fashion photography. And, um, and, and by the way, guys, I would love for you guys to um, ask some, uh, some questions. This is also in the Q&A. Um, and I, can I, I see there's, there's one. There's a long question here by Matthew Beard. Uh, but I'd love for you guys um, to ask um, any questions about how uh, to make money in your uh, specific type of photography. Now, I've, I've talked a little bit about wedding photography and about adding value. I'm going to talk about fashion. I'm going to talk about fine art. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different types of photography. Um, but I want you guys to also um, ask some questions in the Q&A because I'm very curious. I want to know um, what you guys, uh, what you want to know specifically how to make money in your genre of photography. And I'd love to talk about it live and answer any of your questions. Um, that's what this is all about. Um, and by the way, I'm also um, going to be bringing on um, some awesome panelists today. Um, I believe I have the great Stephen Paul, who is a world-class uh, photographer. Um, and um, he was absolutely incredible. He attended um, our epic workshop that we just finished um, in Miami. It was like about a week ago or so. That um, And Stephen, um, uh, Stephen was an incredible photographer, created mind-blowing content um, at our um, epic workshop in Miami Beach. And um, we're going to be also looking at some of Stephen's images, and we're going to be asking him about, you know, strategies in which he's making more money in photography. How is he going to be making more money in photography? Because that's going to be something I've personally talked to Stephen about, and um, I know I've mentored him and guided him. I got to work with him in person in Miami a week ago. It was an unbelievable experience, and I want to now talk with Stephen about, you know, what he can do next in making more money in photography. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. So um, please ask in the Q&A. We'd love to answer your questions. Um, feel, don't be afraid to ask um, because we'd love to answer them live. So, all right, now when we get, it gets into fashion photography and pricing, I'm gonna actually showcase to you guys, and I, I you know rarely do this, but this is something where I'm gonna actually showcase to you guys some of the actual pricing from actual campaigns that we're going to be talking about. Okay, so these are these are campaigns, um, ones projects that I've worked on and such. And I'm going to be talking live about the budgets, about how much money uh, is involved, how to make money in these projects, where the money is buried within the um, within the uh, production budget, all of this, and how to maximize profitability. So, um, so guys, I'm going to showcase to you some of my projects, and we're going to talk about making money in photography and how you can achieve and do the same thing. So um, I'm, I'm going to start off by showcasing to you guys um, as a I have shot um, a series of campaigns for some fashion brands and some uh, beauty and lifestyle brands. These are commercial jobs where we did both photography and video. Um, and um, this is something that uh, here's a brand. It's a um, it was a fashion brand, um, and uh, this is with my production company, Indigo Productions. Um, and this is essentially what I, I do when we get into conversation with the clients and we talk about budgets, about money, about uh, what we're going to be uh, producing for them and everything like that. I'm going to showcase to you an actual campaign. So um, this is a, a brand. It's a um, it's like a fashion lifestyle brand. Um, they wanted this audacity to be a woman campaign. Here is like a it's like a 27 page proposal that we created. 
And I'm going to showcase to you and actually reveal this live right now to showcase um, what this entails. And so you guys get a feeling of what this is all about. And I'm going to show you live, you know, real numbers. And we're going to talk about the money when it comes to a project like this. Okay. So here's a, um, you know, profile on me. It's got uh, first page who I am. I'm a world renowned TV director, executive producer, cinematographer in LA. Um, you know, I shoot campaigns, you know, major campaigns. I also uh, have a TV show that airs on CBS, uh, Great Escapes. So airs to over 2 million viewers, et cetera. This is all just to build credibility with the client and get them excited because I'm adding value to them. Um, and then also showcasing, I work with top tier talent because they need to know that because I have access to the best of the best models and talent. Um, and, uh, you know, I work with the top 40 modeling agencies in the world that give me an edge because I have personal relationships with them. So essentially giving them value. Now I'm adding more value because this is a smaller company and they need to know that I can bring the A-list talent to the table. Then I bring in my team. Okay, Max Rosen, top executive producer. I bring in four-time Emmy award-winning writer Dave Kamins. Um, he's on my team. I bring these top guys in because, again, I'm adding more value to my client. This is you know, a little info about my production company, cover letters to the clients, director's treatment, my approach, my authentic solution, um, which is the kind of the, the whole treatment of what I'm putting together for the client. My mission, my emotions, my tagline, my target audience. Now, guys, if you guys aren't doing this, if you are in the commercial genre, you got to start doing this right now. Putting together these proposals will drastically increase your chances of landing a campaign and also how much you can charge on the campaign. So if you want to make more money in photography, this is how you do it. Okay. And this will clinch a deal. Now, in this case, the client did not have an ad agency. So I got to work personally with a client. Okay which I think is pretty cool. Now, they wanted this whole sassy woman concept. The sassy woman being, you know, somebody who's got, you know, they're powerful. There's the concepts like three women, they walk into a room, everybody's just like, stop and look, wow, you know, these beautiful women. And, um, and they, you know, and it's a, uh, it's a minority woman owned business. So they wanted to go with that um, female empowerment, African American and Latina kind of feel. So it's like fantastic. I shoot campaigns like this, multiple campaigns like this over the years. I want to showcase some of the stuff that I've done as well. So I'm going to show um, some of the projects that I've already done in this vein, right? So I'm going to be showcasing um, some of not only, you know, these are the productions, uh, the details, the locations, and all this, but also here's the inspiration. They like this Kim Crawford campaign, Liquid Gold. And then I'm going to showcase my work and actual campaigns uh, that I've done that, um, that you know, get them excited that um, they want to emulate, essentially. So, you know, so then we get into this. So this is essentially the, um, this was, and, and by the way, this is about a $100,000 um, campaign that I shot um, that uh, it was like a two day shoot. And this is right in line it feels so with what the clients are achieve, trying to achieve. Look nothing like me. With this whole audacity to be a woman campaign, right? So it's, it's lifestyle-y, it's fashion. This was actually a beauty client. Um, but essentially, it's very similar. You know, they fashion and beauty, it can kind of, um, you know, the lines can get blurred. So this was for a, a hair brand, but it's a little bit, it aligns with what these women want. They wanted empowerment, audacity. They wanted um, confidence. So this whole campaign that I shot is right in line with that. I directed, produced, um, and put this whole thing together. And this is a $100,000 two-day shoot. And we wanted to emulate something kind of like this, but for their brand, right? So um, their brand, we're going to come right in line um, with what they're doing. We also wanted to shoot it in similar locations and stuff like that. So this is the, again, this is the inspiration. This is the concepts. This is what uh, is wowing and dazzling the client and the kind of value that I'm bringing to the table to justify how much I'm charging, which is really, really important because now... You know, how do you justify $100,000 for a job? How do you justify $194,000 for a job? Well, this is how you do it, right? So, um, all right. And, and by the way, uh, there's some really great questions I do want to address right now. Um, there is uh, there's a great question from Desmond Lewis. If you had to start all the way over again, what would you do to get into high-end photography? Well, you know what, Desmond? I would probably do exactly what I did with one caveat, one change. And by the way, guys, I, I, I did my whole uh, education in photography. Um, I did my bachelor's, then I pursued my MFA to be a professor of photography. Then I've been, I've been hustling for my entire career. I've been, you know, working as a full-time photographer, basically since I'm 19 years old. That's all I've ever done. Never done anything else. And um, I would say that um, I, you know, I, I, I not only went for my education, but then I hustled. I started marketing myself really heavily. I got represented by an agent at age 24 years old. Um, an agent in New York started 
marketing to major brands using agency access. And um, uh, there's all these uh, agency database where you contact the art buyers, creative directors, ad agencies. I hustled, I made phone calls, I sent emails out every single day, all day, every day for years, building relationships, building up um, my value in the eyes of the clients, and then started bidding on campaigns when they got to know who I was, and I was calling them on a regular basis and emailing them. They started to know, oh, okay, yeah, I want to, and then they love my work, so they started creating great work. But the one caveat, and the one thing I would do differently is I did all of this on my own, and I had to hustle and grind, and it took hundreds of thousands of dollars and you know years and years and years to develop to where to develop that beautiful portfolio i wish i had the photography workshop series i wish that i had something like what i'm offering now which is an elite photographic workshop where i guarantee you're going to photograph some of the greatest fashion or lifestyle images that you've ever shot in your entire career that will completely transform your photographic business and allow you to make more money in photography, allow you to catapult yourself further in photography, to be able to give you that opportunity to go next level as a photographer. And oh my gosh, I wish I had this when I was first starting out. It would have saved me so much time, energy, and money had I had something like this. Instead, I had to grind it out. I had to deal with so much hassle, so much pain, so many challenges, so much cost to try to produce shoots on my own, shoestring budgets. And they still, as great as they were when I first started, they didn't have this level of production. They didn't have supermodels from Vogue, like you're seeing here from the New York Fashion Workshop. It didn't have fashion stylists at style for Harper's Bazaar. It didn't have um, you know, access to the best of the best name brand designers. It didn't have all of that. And it does now because I have had the opportunity over the last 14 years to direct the photography workshop series and produce productions that are at the scale like this right here at a scale of $100,000 a day production over the course of five days to essentially produce a half million dollar level of production that will wow and dazzle clients. So instead of spending a decade and hundreds of thousands of dollars, you can basically spend five days and develop a 40 image cohesive body of work that would take you years and years and years and tons and tons of time, energy and pain along the way. And I wish that I had this now, Desmond. If I had the photography workshop series when I was first starting, I would have done it in a heartbeat and I would have taken several workshops and I would have completely transformed and, and actually expedited my career even faster. But instead I had to do it the hard way. But for you guys, if you want an easy way, a way to basically learn and grow in a safe environment to work personally with me, and I don't care if you're a wedding photographer, a headshot photographer, a commercial photographer, a boudoir photographer, it doesn't matter. I work with all photographers, no matter what you do, I product photographers, food photographers, photographers who shoot babies, maternity, photographers that are fine art photographers, I work with them all. And I've literally done it all. So I can help you guys achieve greatness in each category of your photographic ability. So, um, all right. This is, these are, and these are some good questions. I mean, I have, um, uh, and I, you know, and I want to address some of these other ones. Craig Brooks asks, what is AI artificial intelligence and how does it apply to photography? I'm going to get to that in a little bit, but essentially Craig, um, AI is essentially just picks taking pixels and moving them around from prior photographs that have been essentially licensed for AI use. So there is still a use for photography to then, you know, basically manipulate those photographs into a new photograph and a new creation. Now, AI is fantastic. And I think that it is a new tool that we could actually take advantage of as a photographer. Um, but I don't know if it's ever going to fully replace, you know, what we know as conventional commercial photography right now. Maybe in the car world, maybe in automotive, it'll replace it faster. But when you're shooting lifestyle photography, I don't really see it. I don't really see it happening anytime in the next, next decade. The quality, uh, the the technology is not there yet to be um, to, to create and tell those stories at a really high level in an authentic, personal way. I just, I don't see it yet. Um, I, th I see it's a great start and I'm actually excited about it, um, but I wouldn't worry about it as a photographer because it's not really taking away from the photographic industry yet. Now it will start to, it'll chip away, but those of you guys that can capitalize on it are going to make a ton of money being able to do it. And there's a lot of ways in which you can incorporate that into your photographic business. And I do advocate that. Okay. So, um, so guys, 
Uh, let me get back to this bid because I know that this was something that um, I I found really exciting. And you guys probably all want to find out what uh, what this kind of stuff means to you and your photography. And then I'm going to get on to Stephen Paul, our illustrious panelist, so that he can um, talk candidly about his experience as well. So if we're looking at this this project, and you guys got to see this campaign um, of some of the prior campaigns that I shot leading up to this to show them inspiration. And these are different examples. These are different campaigns and, and commercials I shot. Um, and then we get to this final budget, okay? And there's a lot of different nuances here, but I want to show you the overall budget, $194,340 for the shoot, okay? Now, personally, I make about $145,000 out of this in profit. Um, some of the costs that are hard costs that I don't uh, make a profit from are essentially the talent costs and the talent agency costs, okay? So that's pretty significant, right? That's that's about 38 grand right there. Um, catering as well. Um, most of the rest of this though is pure profit from all the rentals, because I own all my equipment. And those of you guys who own your own cameras, you probably all have your own cameras and lenses and stuff. I rent that to myself. Every time I do a production, I rent those, those pieces of equipment to myself. And I essentially have my separate production company that owns all my equipment. And I lease that equipment to myself. And that's how it's done. That's how I make a ton of money. So equipment total, 14800 The vast majority of that is pure profit because I own everything. Okay. Um, I also um, have an insurance. Now, I already pay for insurance anyways. So this is just basically recouping the insurance that I pay yearly anyways for liability insurance. Um, location fees. Oftentimes, you know, it's it's very expensive, you know, to, to rent these elaborate locations. I have all kinds of personal relationships with, you know, these $40 million mansions and $18 million beach houses and unbelievable castles and all this stuff. So I have access because I have personal relationships and I can often get them for a lot less than what you can build a client for, for location fees. Um, film permits, same thing. Um, film permits, unless they're in LA County, outside of LA County, they're usually generally fairly inexpensive. Um, we did just shoot in Miami and they were fairly expensive shooting in Key Biscayne, um, but not so much, you know, much less expensive in Miami Beach. I believe it's free in Miami Beach, but Key Biscayne, you, you are going to pay some, a few thousand for uh, film permits, which we did uh, for shooting Key Biscayne, which is incredible. That's an area of Miami that looks like the Bahamas. Now there's, of course, production costs. A lot of these production costs are going into my pocket. Because I'm essentially doing the casting. I charge a $3,000 casting fee, $1,500 a day times two. Um, I'm I'm doing that myself. Uh, filming the casting fee, I'm going to film it as well. I just have a video camera playing and I'm going to charge them for that. I'm also uh, the director listed as that. So it's $5,000 a day for four days, two film days, one pre-production day, one post-production day. So that's $20,000. Um, I'm also going to be doing, um, I'm the cinematographer. I'm going to be wearing a lot of hats, a director, cinematographer, and a producer. Um, now I'm going to hire some camera operators and, you know, they range from 400 to 600 a day. In this case, I put in 500 a day for two days filming. Um, and then ACs, first ACs, um, and second ACs, these are assistant camera operators and, and, um, second assistant camera operators. I need them as well. They're 400 a day. Um, a sound engineer as well. And I'm a grip and gaffer, three PAs. So there are some costs there. Okay. But a lot of that is going into my pocket because all the stuff that's what we call above the line, the higher ticket stuff is going into my pocket. Um, then we're talking about um, the creative fees, uh, which are $60,000 in creative fee. So this is just basically my fee to create broadcast quality commercial video and then editing. Now the editing on this um, I did hire an editor, but they did it for a tiny fraction of what I'm charging the client because I'm also working on the editing personally um, and directing the editor how I want it done. Um, so most of that comes in as profit, a few grand for editing, but the majority of that's process. So I'm kind of showing you guys within the budget how to maximize profits, how to pocket most of this cost. And this is how we make money in photography. Okay. So, you know, line by line, but this is the secret sauce, guys. And there's one last thing I want to show you. I'm going to show you how to maximize how much you make as a photographer with the media buy. Okay. So in this budget, we asked, we also have a few very specific things here um, that the content will be available to be licensed from our production company at 15% of the media buy for usage. And that's for broadcast and SVOD streaming plus 10% media buy for media planning and buying services. This is where the money is made. So guys, if you guys ever have seen the movie Matt or the TV show Mad Men, 
they actually talk about, I think in um, the first season, they actually talk about it candidly. They're like, you know what? All the money is made on the media placement. It's all on selling the advertising space. The creative, it's just window dressing. It, it literally costs them almost nothing to do the creative. So the, the productions, as far as the photo shoots, the, the, even the commercial productions and all the artwork is a tiny fraction. It's usually less than 10% of the media spend, which is nothing. So if we think that $194,000 sounds like a lot of money. For these companies, it's nothing. It's a tiny fraction. It's a drop in the bucket. And believe it or not, that is a, a tiny fraction. The real money is all being spent on the media placement, whether it's going to go on a billboard, a print magazine, whether it's going to go on social media as well, if it's going to be paid ads on Facebook or Instagram, you know, they say it's just social media. It's actually very expensive to spend money on social media. So there's a lot of money involved with that on social media. So, um, or is it going to be like broadcast commercial? So in this case, um, they wanted broadcast commercial. And guys, this I'm showing you guys some top secret stuff here. This is stuff that nobody talks about. I don't know any other photographic mentor that's talking about this that even does this personally. So I'm going to show you under the hood. So after that $194,000 budget, that's the tip of the iceberg. The real money comes in in the media buy. So this client, they don't have an ad agency because ad agencies, you know, that's where they make their billions is on this. It's not on hiring photographers for photo shoots. So if we can be the agency, all it takes is one phone call to um, a media placement company. So if you're dealing with photography, if I'm calling, um, you know, say uh, Condé Nast, who owns Vogue and Harper's Bazaar, you know, or, or owns um, uh, Vogue and a lot of the top fashion magazines. Um, if I'm con calling Condé Nast, they can, or Hearst Publications, they're going to be doing media placement, like print ads and theirs. Or is it Viacom for like, say, um, or uh, for billboards? Or are we dealing with cable uh, television stuff because it's video. In this case, it's that. So um, we're dealing with a, a company called, called Ampersand. And this is my agency media buy. Now, trade you agency, that's my company. I'm essentially, all this takes is one phone call to, to a company that does the media placement. So in this case, it's Ampersand, but it could be Spectrum or Frontier or whatever your cable network is. And this is the detail. So we have um, ex exposure. We want the massive, this is the massive impact. Uh, this is over just a couple of months of media spend uh, from March and April. Um, women's peril, they're targeting women's demo of women 30 plus, specifically um, for the uh, African-American Latino audience. Um, and um, these are the placements. Now, I'm going to actually show you a zoomed out version, but these are all the placements. And guys, you don't have to know any of this stuff. This They do this all for you. I literally make one phone call and they, they write all this up and they kind of digitize it and put it together. However, the real important stuff in here is what was in that contract I just showed you. Plus, look at this. The overall total investment for placement is 1.5 million, which is pretty standard on $194,000 budget production, we have a $1.5 million media total investment for placement, usage, and creative fees. So $1.2 million for, that's going to this um, uh, to Ampersand, which is the media placement. We're going to charge a 15% usage fee for licensing the video content to the top 30 cable networks. That's $180,000. Okay. Then we have a 10% media buy agency fee, agency fee for placement in 30 cable networks and national networks and streaming as well. So now we have 15% usage plus 10% media buy. Now we're already at 25%. Okay. That's pretty substantial. That all goes into my pocket. This is how you make money in photography guys and video. Okay. So the next thing is I also, since making that phone call, I'm essentially their agency of record all. And that's just making one phone call. Now, when I speak to Ampersand, I tell them, hey, I've got this client. They're bringing in 1.2 million in to spend with you. Um, I, If I'm bringing the client in, I would like to have a kickback. So I now get a commission being an agency and I get a 15% kickback from Ampersand that's buried in this. So they pay that back to me directly. The client doesn't even see that. So now we're talking 15% there plus another 15% usage fee for licensing, plus a 10% media buying fee. Now we're at 40% of 1.5 million. Okay. So we're talking about a lot of money here. So if we're doing the numbers and if you guys want to make money in photography, right? So we're talking 40% and essentially that's on um, 1.5 million. We're looking at, um, you know, pretty substantial numbers here. We're talking, you know, $600,000 that I'm making off of this plus 
we're talking about an additional $194,000 production budget, which I walk away with about $145,000 at the end of the day. So it's a pretty substantial amount. And guys, this is how you make money in photography and video. Very, very valuable. Okay. And this is something that, you know, I want to show this to you guys because I want you guys to succeed. You know, I want you guys winning. I want you guys crushing it in the industry. I, I want you guys to know all these kind of top secrets so that you guys can go out and totally, um, you know, be as successful as you possibly can be. Very, very, very important to me. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to strongly recommend that. And I want you guys to think about all of these awesome tactics that I'm talking about today. And I want you to use them. I want you to guys to use these to your advantage. And if you guys, you know, need to learn more about this, you don't fully grip it. We actually offer an epic virtual workshop specifically on this, closing the deal and making more money as photography. So by the way, I'm going to uh, bring on the great Stephen Paul, because I know you only have a short window here, Stephen, to talk. Um, but Stephen, um, hopefully you also learned a little bit on what I just talked about on making more money in photography. Man, want... every time I'm around you, I learn a little bit more and I really appreciate it. <laughs> Fabulous. So Stephen, why don't you introduce who you are and tell us a little bit about, you know, how you make money in photography and also uh, the experience that you had like a week ago in Miami Beach with me at the phot uh, photography workshop series. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been making money uh, as a real estate photographer for about 14, 15 years now. Um, and whenever I get a chance to shoot products or um, uh, small commercials, that's been my gig. So um, I've done it for a long time, but I've been looking for a way to branch into a new new realm. And uh, uh, literally everyone I've ever talked to has not given me even an inkling of what do I need to do different. I've sent stuff to agencies. I've talked to uh, photo agents nothing. I've met a lot of nice people, but it hasn't translated into bigger work. And so now I'm starting to understand what I'm missing and able to make some attempts to uh, fix that. And uh, what do you feel like you're missing? Uh, well, I was missing um, not understanding what the agents are looking for. I, I had beautiful shots, but they weren't the shots that they needed to see. And uh, so it didn't matter that they were beautiful. Um, they just, they were the wrong things. It's like, why would I use a guy that shoots awesome tennis shoe product shots? Um, because this is a lifestyle campaign. <laughs> I just thought all I had to do was have awesome pictures and uh, show I could kill it. Um, but that, that hasn't been enough. Every once in a while it works out, but, uh, and I've been super lucky through my career that it's worked out, um, you know, all the way up into doing a, a Hollywood feature film once uh, as a DP. Um, but that was stupid luck and it doesn't work out well <laughs> when you're just waiting on luck. So having some ideas of this is what I need to show to people. This is how I need to present it. Um, that's actually been blowing my mind. It's like, I've wanted to figure this out, but literally everyone I've ever talked to has been so concerned that if they let me know about how they did it, I was never going to take some you know, uh, now I'd be competing against them. And I feel like with you, uh, you're very, very open to sharing stuff. And uh, I really appreciate it. Well, Stephen, because I want you to succeed. And when you succeed, I succeed. Because what happens is, is guys like Stephen will, you know, they, they get involved with us. We mentor, we guide them. They take a workshop. They shoot the greatest images. And by the way, this is content that, you know, Stephen was just shooting in Miami Beach um, just, you know, like a week ago. Um, but you know, what, what's great is that photographers like Steven will then take this and translate it to say shooting a Coca-Cola campaign. And then they're like, they get into it and they get in deep and they're like, oh my gosh, I've got this, you know, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar campaign. What do I do? They call me up and I'm like, Hey, well, I'm happy to help you. I step in, I, you, you know, leverage off of my Epic reels so that it gives you more power and, and intensity. When you go in, it gives you more of a chance to win the bid. And then also um, guys like Steven get to look like a hero to your client and you get to land the photographic campaign, the video campaign, and I can help you produce it. So um, what is, so, so tell me a little bit about how you were pricing your photography. 
um, with real estate and everything else you do, um, and maybe how you're going to change some of the pricing and maybe some of the strategies and how you're going to make more money in the future in photography. So, so first of all, what has it been for the last 15 years? What is like your bread and butter, the pricing, how much you make on per shoot, um, and and how 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 that goes? What you've done previously? Sure. Um, real estate obviously is kind of bottom of the barrel, but uh, uh, you know. Nowadays, it's like 275 to about 350 for a shoot. And it's a ton of work. Um, if you add video to it, it's about another 450. So um, yesterday, I, I did a $2,100 day uh, of photography. Um, but it's super hit and miss. And the clients don't really respect what you do. And they're always looking for someone to do it even cheaper. Um, in my market, I'm I'm at the upper end for real estate uh, photography, uh, where I'm at. And where, so, and where are you at, Stephen? Uh, Portland. Portland, Oregon. Okay. Yeah. So you're at the upper end in Portland, Oregon for real estate. Do you absolutely love real estate photography? Is it your passion? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes and no. I, I love buildings for great design. And so architects are somebody that I'm now chasing. And uh, through some of your advice and Priscilla's advice, uh, like if you hopped on my website, I don't have any home stuff on there, but I've got building stuff that I've done. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I just landed my my first architecture firm. Um, uh, about three weeks ago, I, I started talking with them, um, but I'd already made those changes in the website. And when they hopped on, they went, wow, you're you're good. <laughs> and uh, that was that was excellent. But I needed some I needed some ideas of of what kind of things sell, what kind of things don't. And now I know you didn't specifically talk architecture uh, with me, but the things that you did talk about helped me understand things a little bit better. That's not me. Oh, sorry, this is not you. <laughs> can you put your uh, Can you it's, put your domain into the uh, into the chat? Chat, sure. <laughs> that was funny. That's a, uh, our Paul, your Stephen Paul. Stephen Dick. Paul Studio. Stephen Paul Studios. Okay. There you go. Well, see, and that that's an issue alone. The fact that there's another Stephen Paul shooting real estate photography and architectural photography because it's just kind of a commodity. It doesn't really make you stand out. It's just kind of like anyone can do it. There's a billion photographers doing the same thing. So it's kind of considered a commodity at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's there in the chat for you. Um, and and I'm still working on your advice uh, of having having separate websites, and uh, so I've bought the domain names and whatnot, and now now we're going for it. Um, See what I love here, Stephen, is you've got content like this though that's very like you mentioned the architecture stuff, but this is the kind of stuff where it's people, it's marketable, it's sellable, um, it's people experiencing moments. We call this slice of life photography. This is the kind of stuff, Stephen, that's the most marketable and profitable type of photography in the world. And believe it or not, this is way more profitable than shooting like a Louis Vuitton can campaign. This is the this is where the real money is. So the fact you already have this, it really is a great first step. And then of course, what we just created in Miami to add to that, but with top models, is is basically everything you needed with going. Yeah, I'm looking here. forward to your critique on on the selections and and what ones to to change out. Um, because I want to I want to hit that. Um, but if you go to the bottom here, you'll find find the building stuff that I've done and. It's it's way down there. So a little celebrity portrait stuff. And, Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So um, now, what when we're looking at those three hundred, say three hundred fifty dollars a photo shoot for like you know real estate photography and things like that, maybe sometimes twenty five hundred if you got a good one. Um, what would it feel like, Stephen, if you got to land say a hundred and ninety four thousand dollar lifestyle campaign for two days? That would be life changing. In all seriousness. Um, yeah, the Hurley building there, uh, that one was, was my most recent uh, developer. Um, so if you slide down a little bit more. Um, so this little Hurley building thing, um, just being able to show my value, um, which is something I haven't talked enough about. So just how I'm learning to interact with people and share who I am and what I do. Uh, I'm starting to get people going, oh, Oh, you're you're like the real deal. 
Um, and the, the stuff from Miami, when I've shown that to people, they're like, oh my gosh, you are, you're a pro pro. Um, and so there, there's no more question about, well, can you pull it off? It's like, oh my gosh, yeah, we're, we're going to have to pay for this guy, which is a blessing and a curse. So I need to start start marketing very heavily now for some of that uh, campaign stuff because uh, my my other clients are starting to go, crap, we can't afford this guy now. <laughs> That's good though. That's good. It, it, it is good. good. So I'm in this new I'm in this new place and I'm excited about it. Um, and so I'm looking forward to to uh, finishing off my uh, book of of uh, images. Um, Absolutely. Well, Stephen, so this is where I want I'm excited. You. You, you need to fire bad customers or low paying customers and go after the high end customers. There's no reason not to. And I, and so what you're saying is, is what we shot in Miami has kind of put you on a new echelon in how they respect you and how they look at you as a photographer. They do. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. So now it's, it's just continuing to learn uh, to market. And I mean, I've learned so much in the last, well, since February, when I finally bit the bullet and said, I'm going to work with this guy. And I was like, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I did it. And uh, you, you are really helping me out a lot. And uh, I'm appreciating it. Well, Stephen, I love working with you on set. You're a true professional. We also had a really great group of photographers there, didn't we? Everybody they were fantastic. There just the nicest, kindest, most professional people. And everybody just was on set, just had a blast and everybody created just absolute magic. They had great personalities and uh, they even allowed me to give them a hard time. I, I love giving people light, light hard times and they all rolled with it and were, were super cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, the work speaks for itself. I mean, you're a really talented photographer, really proud of what, what you're doing here. Um, you know, just creating some, uh, you know, some fabulous uh, photography with beautiful styling caught in the moment, creating these stories, because that's really what it's about. It's creating stories, allowing them to unfold and then capturing them. So everything feels like real and authentic and doing it with world-class models really makes a difference. So why don't you tell us a little bit, Stephen, of what's next? Like, how do you want to, do you want to achieve those $200,000 campaigns? And what, what do you want to do to like, how do you feel like the Miami stuff is going to help you get there? Yeah. Um, being able to put, put, almost a book together to show off to uh, to some creative directors and some agencies here uh, in the Portland metro area. We've got uh, Wyden and Kennedy, um, who I would love to work with. Um, uh, another one, Swift. Uh, those would be the two that I'm kind of looking for um, here in the Portland metro market, but starting to venture out and to look more into the LA market and uh, talking down there. Um, Presley was amazing. She and, and yeah, yeah, and I just wanted to point this out. The models were a list. They were some of the best models we've ever had a chance to work with. They were just unbelievable top models in Miami, and so professional. And also the wardrobe styling. You know, th this was like a I don't know six hundred dollar, eight hundred dollar like you know beautiful dress from like Love Shack Fancy out of you know with free people. And and I, what I love here is that you showcase the architecture, you showcased the hotel, like. Um, uh, their 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 brand with their whole um, uh, their little uh, cabanas and their shacks and everything, and then it also intermixed color wise with the pink and white with the garment, uh, and also the model stunning and she's also camera left, so you have a seam down the middle, perfect for a double page spread editorial or advertising campaign. So absolutely love this, Stephen. This is one of my favorite shots, um, and extremely raises the level of your brand. Very much. As you and I talked, uh, mentioning that I, I like the idea of shooting resorts. And so I really was trying to to show that off in, in this specific uh, scene. Um, so I wasn't sure if you were going to like the hands over the head. Uh, you know, it, you can get too handsy with stuff. And so uh, um, I was super valuing your your uh, input on on things that are are uh, important for uh, art buyers and for the creatives. Um, even even the simplicity of of being a uh, a two page shot and having that scene uh, open up so that it's it's not cutting off someone's face. Something I'd never thought about. Absolutely, 
Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, it is important to tell those stories with the, the correct layouts is what you're talking about specifically here. And, uh, but, but just the quality of what this, this is the kind of thing that demands higher pricing. This demands making more money in photography. And this is the kind of thing where somebody who's an architectural real estate guy can meld that together, even with commercial, even with fashion, even with resorts and kind of meld it together with something. And it can actually be marketable to multiple different types of clients. And I've actually worked with a lot of real estate photographers, just like you and, and architectural photographers. And what's always missing is that the problem with real estate and architecture is that because there are generally no people in it, you can't justify much of a, a cost. You can't charge that much. And also, you know, who the clients are. You're talking to real estate agents who they're biting the bullet and paying this out of pocket because they're working on commission for their clients, right? To, to buy and sell houses. So for them, um, if they're a, you know, they're a listing agent, they're only going to put out so much to hire a photographer. So it's kind of a different type of beast. When you're talking about an advertising campaign, you know, and say this is a advertising campaign for the SLS or the W Hotel or something like that. They have massive budgets to go national, uh, national campaigns where you know, say it's a you know ten million dollar media buy, and then they need to you know hire the photographer and the commercial production team to shoot the, um, you know, shoot the actual commercial and the photographic print campaign. They have a pretty sizable. Uh, campaign budget to hire you as photographers. And this is what I would recommend you go after those type of, of big high-end clientele. Yeah, I, I know you're right. And I need to keep keep taking the baby steps to make that direction happen. Um, and I'm like I said, I'm excited about that. So excellent, excellent. Well, I'm here to help you every step of the way. And this is one cool thing because you know, Stephen mentioned, you know, he started back in February. We start with our photographers, we work with them before the workshop, during the workshop, and then after the workshop to make sure that they are successful. Because I, I'm not interested in Stephen just coming and taking a workshop, taking great pictures and buy. I want Stephen to be extremely successful. I want him to be a case study. I want to showcase Stephen, you know, shooting six figure campaigns after the workshop. So it's in my vested interest to make sure uh, that Stephen becomes a superstar. And I, I do everything I can. And so does my team, my professional photographic consultants to help make that happen. So yeah, your team yeah. is amazing. Um, yeah, they really are. Priscilla has been awesome. So awesome. And and tell me a little bit about that. Like what, what do you get out of say those photographic uh, mastermind sessions when you talk to one of our photographic consultants? Boy, with uh, uh, Priscilla, I, I literally completely scrapped my old website and uh, with, with her uh, guidance, just uh, revamped what kind of photos I needed to have. I had a lot of great photos but they weren't ones that were, were getting people excited about me. And, um, and so it was a little bit of meaning to let go of some stuff because um, I thought it was good. And, and honestly, it was good, but it, it, it all depends who you're marketing to. And uh, as I'm learning to market to the right client, um, having to change how I think about things. And yeah, so it's, it's been invaluable in that. Excellent. Excellent. So, and and guys, if you check the chat, I just put a link on there. If you want to set up your own one-on-one -on -one photographic mastermind session, like Steven's talking about, you can jump on with one of our elite photographic consultants uh, that work personally with me that can help you. It's totally free, totally free of charge. Whether you take a workshop or don't take a workshop, it doesn't matter. I want you guys to achieve greatness. And uh, I want you to achieve like like uh, Steven is. And I want you to go ahead and click that, set up your own strategy session. And also Steven, I want you to, I don't know if you've already set it up with Priscilla, but we also, after the workshops, we go over a one-on-one -on -one image review. And I know, you know, you sent these images over to Priscilla. You guys will set up your one-on-one -on -one image review. So Priscilla will actually give you a professional photo critique and select the best of the best images that we're going to use for your master portfolio and all of your marketing. Um, so it's really cool. It's kind of a, a real awesome bonus that when you attend the workshop, we also help you select the pictures. It's a super awesome bonus. And I'm I'm thrilled about that because uh, she, she actually uh, went through images that I've already selected and had a, a couple of takes on, well, maybe you need to do this, or maybe we need to find a better one of that. It's like, okay, I, I'm all in. I'm, uh, I'm so happy to finally have someone. Uh, last year, I, I had a uh, a local guy who, who's been a fairly successful in my area, 
uh, photographer who was helping me out, had some uh, medical issues and just flat out isn't available. And um, um, and that just kind of put the brakes on where I was going and, and how I was making forward progress. And so to, to have this, I feel like I've jumped so much further with you guys in a very short time than I ever did with uh, uh, the person that's that had been helping me. So that's excellent. Excellent. Yeah, well, that's so fantastic. Cedar. Thrilled, I can't man. wait to see you at the next one. I know we were talking about the Virginia experience or, you know, coming to masterclass or New York, you know, or um, Newport beach, but I can't wait to see you at the next one, Steven. Um, I know that, you know, you're able to create this mind blowing lifestyle kind of cornerstone to your book. Now we need to finish it off. Now we need to create final, final, final content to put it all together to maximize that master 40 image cohesive body of work that you can start you know, landing those big campaigns with. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm agreeing that I, I need to get those, those last 20 ish and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. Um, I really appreciate all of your guidance and, or all of your, you know, um, personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, experiences. And I can't wait to see you make more money in photography. Thanks. I appreciate it, Kevin. All right. Take care. Take care. All right, guys. So you got to hear from the great Stephen Paul, an amazing photographer, world-class photographer, and look at his content. I mean, this image alone, this is that what I would call an iconic picture, an iconic photograph, meaning that it's an image that like I could almost blow up on a wall on a big canvas and I would be like, holy crap, this is an incredible shot. And it's marketable on so many different levels for resorts, for, um, you know, for um, wellness, for um, architecture, for fashion, for lifestyle, for beauty. I mean, there's so many different uses for an image like this and it's extremely marketable. This is the kind of image that's going to land Stephen um, hundreds of thousands of dollars this kind of image right here, this image specifically, and the more images that he shoots like this. Absolutely incredible. And also he shot world-class video with 8K uh, video cameras, as well as um, uh, on gimbals and drones during the workshop in Miami. So that was a really, really awesome experience. Um, and by the way, I, I got a million questions uh, on here that I want to get to. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Um, so uh, let me get to a few of these. Um, we had some questions about the media buys a little bit ago. Um, so uh, Hugo Fezzi asks, hey, just to be clear for media buy, are you acting as their agency to get all the placements done? What if they have their own ad agency? That's a great question. So Hugo, if they have their own ad agency, then typically you're not going to do the media buy. The agency is going to do the media buy. That's why the ad agency is with them. It's yes, they're going to do creative for them, but they're not really making money on the creative. They're making money on the media buy. So of course the agency, that's where they're making all their money. They're handling the media buy. So in that case, you're, what you're going to do, which is mostly what I do is working directly with ad agencies where they're dealing with their own media buys. This was a you know unique experience. Um, but if I'm dealing directly with an ad agency, I'm going to be um, doing the same thing like I did with that budget, 194,000. Um, but I'm also going to be taking a usage fee based upon the media buy. So if the media buy is, you know, 1.5 million, if I do a 10% of media buy, then, you know, essentially I'm getting 10% of the 1.5 million, if that makes sense. So I'd, I'd be making a, a usage fee of 150,000 on the usage. And I would say 10% is just kind of a, it's a rough, rule of thumb to go by. Some people are cool with it. Some, some brands are not, but I would say that that's a pretty standard. I like to stay in is around 10% of media buy. Okay. So if the usage, if the media buy is you know, 1.5, we do say 150,000 on, um, and that's your usage fee on top of the production budget and on top of creative fee. So if you have creative fee, like your photographer fee or your creative fee or um, you know, that's different from usage that's to hire you as the photographer or director. Plus you have your usage fee for the use on the content. So hopefully that clears it up for you, Hugo. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Andreas Nuttall says, uh, I'm looking to break the world record for the most expensive photograph ever sold. I have sh I had the shot, but it needs to get in front of the right people. That's fantastic. Andreas. I, I, I would love to see it. Um, you can feel free to share it with me. 
uh, on the chat and, um, you know, and, or send a link to it. And I'd love to see that picture, Andreas. And I'd be happy to showcase everybody on this webinar um, that uh, the, the image that you feel is going to break the record for the most expensive photograph ever sold. Um, I mean, there are some incredible sales that have happened in the last, you know, five, six years of uh, photographs being like the most expensive photographs ever sold. Generally, these are fine art photographs. Um, but uh, that's something that um, uh, takes a lot of marketing of your brand. Um, a lot of times um, you're going to need gallery, um, like a gallery director or like an agent that, that like an art dealer that represents you um, to basically build that, that, you know, hotness and all that pop to be able to make you blow up at like Art Basel. So, uh, and, and oftentimes too, most expensive uh, photographs ever sold are generally um, not living photographers. That that's also the case as well. So um, that's uh, you know oftentimes there of you know photographers that may have passed away and stuff like that. But there are some living photographers that have absolutely crushed it. I know like Peter Lick. You know he sold like a six point five million dollar um, you know photograph. Um, you know there's been some. Uh, you know, incredible sales of photographs. Um, I think, uh, you know, Man Ray's uh, frame photograph of uh, Kiki de Montparnasse sells, sold for like 12.4 million. So there are some incredible sales for fine art photographs. That's true. Um, that can be, can be lucrative, but you're talking about the top one, one hundred thousandth of 1% of fine art photographers that are making that kind of money. Most fine art photographers are going to have to hustle and market the heck out of their photographs and make sure they're in as many galleries as possible, build a buzz, get excitement, get a lot of publicity. You probably need a publicist. I'd recommend getting published, winning as many awards as possible. Um, so entering awards all the time. Um, and by the way, guys, um, with the photography workshop series, we've won um, now I believe we're at about 184 photographic awards. In fact, the great Evan Siegel, I saw he just won a couple of awards and the um, uh, color awards. Um, I believe Prince Williams, who's on right now, just won some honorable mentions in the color awards. Really proud of you guys. Uh, the photography workshop series alone. So around 184 photographic awards just in the last two years, including the top 10 fashion photographers in America award in the One Island Awards. Seven out of 10 of them um, were from the photography workshop series. And then this most recent one, three out of 10 were from the photography workshop series. So incredible. So 10 photographers just in the last two years have won in the top 10 fashion photographers in America. These are some of the winners. Unbelievable. Really, really proud of all my photographers. These are all shot, photographed, um, directed, produced, and art directed by me and photographed on location at the Photography Workshop Series. So it's really, really, really exciting. And I'm really proud of all our incredible photographers that are absolutely crushing it. So congratulations, Prince. I know you're on right now. Um, absolutely fantastic job. Uh, really, really proud of you and everything you've done. And I know, Evan, I don't know if you're on, but um, I think you're you're traveling, but really proud of you as well. And we have all these incredible photographers that are absolutely crushing it. So definitely helps winning awards, um, really adds to your brand, adds to what you can charge the photographer. Because if you can go from a unknown photographer to shooting iconic images like this and winning top 10 fashion photographer in America award, well, you better be, you know, you're right. You can charge more for mere photography. You can because the value justifies the price. That's what it takes. Really, really incredible to see. Really proud of you guys. And um, I love to see. And I'd, I'd also recommend Stephen um, submitting his images uh, as well into these um, photographic awards. I'd love, 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 love to see that. Really, really exciting. Um, so guys, I'm really uh, wanting to answer some more of these questions. So please ask them in the Q&A. Um, not just in the chat, because I kind of lose them in the chat. Um, but these are some really, really uh, great questions. Okay, Matthew Beard asked some great questions. You guys have multiple questions, Matthew. I did want to um, answer this one. Are you using BlinkBid for your estimates and invoices? Yes, I am, Matthew. Uh, you're, that's a great um, uh, that's a great uh, use of um, estimates. You probably recognize that because you you saw the estimate I was just going through. That was from a BlinkBid. Um, BlinkBid is a software and I always loved it. I've used it for uh, whew, maybe 13 years or so. Um, it's really, really great. It's designed for photographers to go through and actually create bids. 
Um, and it uh, it's very, very clean. It helps you remember things too. Like, oh yeah, I got to add craft services or catering or whatever. Oh, I got to add talent. Oh, I got to add talent fees. There's all these extra things that makes you build. It basically allows you to just input things and you build the the bid on, on that. So that's really, really um, helpful. I do recommend it. That's a great, great um, reminder on that. Um, I really appreciate it, Matthew. Okay. Um, Michael Campbell asks, can you cover headshots for businesses, actors, models, realtors? Okay. Um, so Michael, now headshots, portraits, um, and, uh, and business, uh, headshots are all very, very different. So let's, let's tackle those one at a time. Um, my recommendation, if you're going to do all of that, like headshots for business, uh, business people, actors, models, realtors, senior pictures, all that, um, I would, of all of those, I would say the most lucrative are going to be executive portraits. Um, I have some photographers, um, namely, and let's see, I'm not sure if Martika's on, but Martika Gartman, she's attended, I don't know, maybe nine of our photographic workshops. Um, and she started out, actually, Martika's an interesting story. She's a, she's an incredible African-American woman, lives in Chicago. Um, she used to be a lobbyist and an attorney in Washington, D.C. She retired from that. She became a photographer. When I met her, like, eight years ago or so, she was just doing little photo shoots, making a couple hundred dollars on real estate photography. And I got an email from her this last year telling me that she, after doing several of our photographic workshops, she's now making more money as a photographer than she ever did as a lobbyist or an attorney. And she's primarily shooting executive portraits and headshots. So really proud of Martika and how far she's come. And she's used the photography workshop series images to increase her value and increase her success in photography and make more money shooting portraits and headshots. Because when you're shooting top celebrity models and stuff, it really adds the value and what you can charge for portraiture um, and headshots. Now for executive portraits, what I like to do is, um, you know, I like to come in to uh, directly to companies. So say you're contacting, say a tech company like Oracle or Facebook or something, get in touch with them on um, essentially the corporate side, offering your services to shoot all the executive portraits in one day. So say they have a conference or say they're all getting together and you can coordinate that and then charge them a per person headshot. Now, it obviously depends on how many are there, um, but I know Martika does this all the time. And what she often does is she'll, you know, she'll go in with law firms and shoot the entire law firm's corporate headshots, which they often have to do, you know, and they, you know, they have to do it every year, new people come in and out, and we need to shoot their, you know, executive portraits, and then even a group shot sometimes. So with that, you know, it could range. I mean, it can range. Um, I would suggest somewhere, especially if it's a large group, I would suggest somewhere around the um, $1,200 per person um, range. And then if we're doing, say, you know, 50 people, that adds up quick, you know, times 1200 a person. Now, these of course, law firms and stuff, they have a lot of money. So are these tech companies, I think that that's fair. And that's something that I would charge. Now, if um, obviously, if they don't have the budget, you have to work with them. Um, but I wouldn't do it for just a couple hundred bucks a, a person. I would do it for over a thousand, be my recommendation. And believe it or not, they'll come up with the money more times than not to do it if, if you can show value. So, you know, 50 corporate headshots, $1,200 a person, you do the numbers, you're going to make some serious money. Whereas if you're doing one by one individual portraiture, it's going to be a lot harder to make some real money doing that. Um, now, um, I actually started my career, you guys, as a um, senior picture photographer. When I, I should, I, I actually take that back. I started as a fine art photographer and landscape photographer and then got into senior pictures when I was 19 years old. Okay. And at 19 years old, um, the business model back then was to essentially, um, and I've, I've mentioned this on a webinar in the past, but basically what I would do is I would, through people I know, I would get somebody on who is a model or, you know, beautiful young person at the high, local high school. So say you get the prettiest girl at the local high school. Um, and, um, and especially if they're, if you find any aspiring models and stuff like that, um, and you get them to be, uh, you shoot them for free. There, they now become your, um, you know, your, your essentially flagship person, um, and the person that's going to represent you at that high school. So I would go to the most high end high schools, and you know, I grew up in West Michigan. I grew up in a little, very poor uh, community in rural West Michigan. So I would go after the very wealthy areas uh, of Grand Rapids, so East Grand Rapids, Forest Hills, um, Holland, Grand Haven, the, the wealthier areas, and I would get the hot, you know, the most beautiful girl, you know, who's junior in high school going into the senior year, um, who's aspiring model. And I would, you know, through, and I was young. So, I mean, I had networks and stuff. If you guys have kids that have 
um, you know, uh, people that are, uh, you know, of that age, um, offer that for free. You know, I'm going to do a free senior pictures for you. Um, and then what you can do is you do that session for free and you photograph all these incredible images and then give them a proof sheet. Now, what I did back in the day, this is a while ago, but what I did back in the day was I printed out like a proof book. And I honestly think you could probably still do that. You print them out a proof book and of all the best pictures and have them do multiple wardrobe changes too. So they have a lot of options um, and do it in a cool location. Like I would do these out on Lake Michigan on the beach, you know, do a bunch of wardrobe changes and, you know, they, they felt like models and they loved it. And then I would print out a proof book, give it to them and say, okay, bring this to your high school and have all of your friends tell you which picture to choose for your yearbook and which ones to order. That works because now they have all their friends. Oh my God, that's such a cute picture. Who shot this? Now they recommend you, Michael. So now, oh, Michael Campbell, you're, you, he was a photographer. He's amazing, isn't he? And then have that person who's representing you write down a list of 10 of their friends, their names, phone numbers, and emails. And for all 10 of those friends, tell that girl, say, you know what? I know they're 17 years old. They don't have a lot of money, but I tell you what, I can make, you can make some money. You give me a list of 10 of your friends or emails and their phone numbers, and you show them your proof book. For every one of these, these kids, your friends that you book with a photo shoot with me, I'll pay you $100 in cash. You better believe they're going to start working, <laughs> you know, the extra thousand bucks at the end of the day, that 17 year old is going to be happy and they're going to be more willing to do it than you think. Now, don't reward the parents because the parents aren't going to care as much, but the, the teenager will care. You give them a hundred bucks for every single one a referral program builds it up. That way you now have your shoe in the door, the foot in the door in that high school, and you can make and totally own it at that high school. And, and you can charge high prices. I mean, I know senior photo, uh, senior portrait photographers that are, you know, making 5,000, $6,000 a senior portrait session, you know, and when it's all coming, it comes down to the final order and everything like that. So there are ways of making a lot of money. I would say on the low end, you should be making a thousand on the higher end. You should be making around uh, five, $6,000 for senior portrait, um, you know, packages. And you can make a lot of money doing that, especially if you do that in bulk. So um, just some great suggestions are Michael for you. Um, so, uh, in, in, um, okay, so uh, Michael also asked for model and actor headshots. Is it worth contacting local agencies where to market for the clientele? Absolutely. When I first started, so I was 19 doing senior pictures and selling fine art and galleries and stuff like that. Um, when I uh, first moved to California and I was like 22, um, I basically contacted all the modeling agencies, started doing uh, test shoots for their agencies to build a portfolio, and then started uh, marketing myself as a uh, shooting a model portfolio shoots. And those you can't make as much doing it, um, you know, anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars per model portfolio shoot. It's whatever the models are open to spending. Um, because obviously a lot of people are booking the models and paying the models to work for them. For, so to convince the models to pay you, um, you've got to get the modeling agencies to get on board and love you. Okay. And I recommend going in in person and meeting them. And I also recommend if you want to do that, having world-class content that is published award-winning or with other top models, just like you see here. You know, you walk into a modeling agency with this kind of content, they're going to open their doors and be like, oh my God, yes, 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 Michael, I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I'm so excited because your work is amazing. Okay. And they will literally like beg you to shoot their models. Okay. But if you don't have content like this, it's going to be a lot harder. Now, um, th so that that's some some strategies for uh, shooting models or, um, or uh, headshots. Talent agencies, modeling agencies, of course, definitely contact all of them and follow up with them on a regular basis. It's not just about um, contacting them once. It's about contacting them on a regular basis to make sure that they remember you so that you stay front of mind. Very, very, very important. Um, and by the way, guys, I'm, I'm asking all these survey questions, like which photographic workshop um, would you guys be most uh, interested in attending? We talked about Miami Beach, which we just finished. Um, Virginia and lifestyle. Chicago, um, which is fashion and lifestyle. We're talking about the French castle, which is at my 49 room, 13th century palace in France, um, which is all on high fashion, shooting with supermodels on location from Paris and Milan, photographing at a 49 room castle. It's going to be absolutely mind blowing um, with a high end costuming from all King Louis the 14th era. Then we have our elite New York fashion workshop, which this last year we shot at a $40 million mansion in um, uh, up in Greenwich, Connecticut. And it was absolutely um 
stunning, completely mind blowing. Um, and uh, and actually, you can see I know uh, I was showing some video earlier of it, but um, content like this was shot um, on location with Vogue stylists, unbelievable in New York. And then our culmination of the year, which is the most exciting, the most over the top, and also the workshop that you guys all want more than anything, because 43% of you said that this is the workshop you'd want to attend. That is the October 2023 Elite Masterclass, where it is essentially the end all be all. This is the workshop that everybody gets most excited about. And the one where um, if you are enrolled in this, we recommend you take one to two main section workshops first, because it's the most elite workshop, but you can actually design the workshop with me. So for instance, some of the concepts I'm showing you here were designed by photographer Mike Wylett, who's attended, as well as Hans J. Paul, as well as some of these other wonderful photographers that had some say in the storytelling, shooting at a vintage airfield in 1940s fighter planes, um, shooting at water studios with uh, parachutes, shooting this mind-blowing content to create iconic images that are absolutely over the top and are going to completely translate to making more money as a photographer. So guys, you know, essentially, if so you want to make more money as a photographer, you need to develop a brand that's powerful, that's going to wow and dazzle the audience. It's going to get you attention and it's going to be high end. It's going to completely blow the competition out of the water and make them want to go with you rather than anyone else because of how much value you bring to the table. That is everything. And if guys, if you haven't set up a one-on-one -on -one photographic mastermind session yet, then I would um, please click on that link in the chat. I would love, love, love. Um, to see it. So, um, and also um, uh, love for um, guys like, you know, you, Matthew Beard, you're asking a lot of great questions, you know, set up a mastermind session. You're already a super talented photographer. We'd love to help you take it to an even higher level. I would love that, Matthew. Um, you know, I, and um, Andreas Nutel, I know, um, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, using your, um, your fine art photography and take it to the next level. Set up a strategy session. We can talk about that. What we can do to take you to the next level with your fine art photography, how to maximize it, how to make more money in it, and what you can do to become an even more elite photographer and get you to that point where you're achieving, you know, high sales in your fine art photography. And that's something that I have a lot of experience in. I've, I've been in um, I, I think like 22 galleries. I've been in um, in museums. I've had my work. I've done tons of fine art photography because I actually pursued my MFA to be a professor of photography. I have this incredible, uh, you know, body of work. And not only from that, but also um, fine art pieces that I've had published since then, and also documentary stories that I've published around the world uh, that I um, that I've also exhibited as well. So um, really, really incredible stuff. So um, guys, you guys are asking some really, really incredible questions, and um, I, I want to make sure that you guys uh, follow up with that on a one-on-one -on -one mastermind session to talk to a photographic consultant directly about that. Uh, but guys, it's all about building that brand, developing who you are as a photographer that's going to stand out, and it's going to justify charging more money and how to make more money as a photographer. Then you've got to market that brand. You've got to get your work out there. And guys, we have an incredible virtual workshop on marketing your photography. It's an incredible experience. It's one that I highly recommend. It's one where it's probably the most popular of all of our workshops that we've ever done. It's the Marketing for Photographers workshop. Uh, it's an incredible vir virtual workshop experience. Um, it's for $12.95. If you guys enroll in this workshop uh, through you know now because you guys are watching this webinar, um, it's uh, it, you guys get a $300 discount, so it's only $9.95. And if you guys are interested in that, um, it's an amazing experience and every photographer that takes it has really incorporated it into their marketing strategies and taken it to the next level. And those of you guys who've attended our workshops before and have done the marketing workshop, I encourage you guys to go back, watch it again, get totally re-inspired and start incorporating those marketing strategies in 2023 to maximize your photographic um, brand and get your brand out there and get it in front of people. The last one is because there are three components to being successful and making more money in photography. One, developing that photographic brand to justify the price. Number two is marketing that photographic brand so that photographers, so that clients understand who you are. They know who you are. They know, you know, how incredible your work is. And now you're competing on value as opposed to price. Okay. 
And then the last thing is, is closing the deal. The third component is actually closing the deal. And this is where we break down media buys, usage rights, creative fees, obtaining representation from agents, and how to actually take a project. If you've been, you know, you developed a brand, you marketed yourself, and then you're now getting to the point where you are talking with clients and bidding on jobs. How do we actually land those jobs? How do we book them? We talk about that on the booking uh, the closing the deal and bringing more clients workshop. It's an incredible experience. It's also um, twelve ninety five with a three hundred dollar discount. You can enroll by um, since you watched this webinar. So this is something that I highly recommend you guys take a part in. And the best part is that thousand dollars will be a one hundred percent credit towards any of our five day workshops. So essentially, you get it for free. And I do this because I want you guys all to be more and more um, successful in your photographic career. Um, I also have a question here from Tanya Hamner. She asks, do you recommend getting an agent to represent you and help you get customers? Well, heck yeah, I would I highly recommend that, Tanya. Uh, everybody, I mean, I definitely recommend obtaining representation as a photographer. Absolutely. I've had four different agents in my career in LA, New York, as well as in Paris. And I tell you what, it definitely raised my brand, my profile, and allowed me to land those bigger high tier clientele. Absolutely. They do take 25% of usage and creative fees. So it's a pretty substantial take. But, you know, if they negotiate a higher rate, in the end, you're doing well. And they have all the relationships with those major decision makers already. The ad agency, creative buyers, uh, art buyers, creative directors, all those important people. However, only the top one one thousandth of 1% of photographers are represented by agents. So if you want to get represented by an agent, of course, everybody wants to get represented by an agent, but it's not easy. So um, now I've been represented since I was 24 years old. So I figured out how to do it. Um, and I obtained, I got representation in New York at 24. Um, I actually talk about this in the Closing the Deal workshop, how to obtain representation and how I did it. So if you want to learn more about that, we go in depth about that. There's also a great resource called theagentlist.com. This is where you can look up every photographic agent worldwide. And um, you can see their website, who they represent what type of photographers they represent, and you can start contacting them. But there's a whole systematic approach to doing this to obtain represent representation and get them to want to work with you. Uh, and if you don't do that, they're just going to ignore you. They're going to say, hey, I'm not adding to my roster right now. They're not interested in talking to you. They'll ignore you. So there's a systematic way to go about obtaining representation that I can teach you. Um, but I highly recommend you guys get involved in our five-day experiences or at least start off with a virtual workshop. So guys, I am really excited. Um, I'm really uh, proud of you guys um, uh, and everything you've achieved. Those of you who have attended the photography workshop series, I'm really incredibly impressed at all those amazing awards, 184 photographic awards in the last two years. That is incredible. Winning top seven out of 10 Fashion Photographers of America Award, that is amazing. And I can't wait to see what we do next because this year is going to be the greatest we've ever had in our entire history of 14 years. We've got incredible experiences at my French castle. We've got, you know, epic experiences, the masterclass. I mean, they're unbelievable productions. And we have one spot left in the Virginia workshop. If any of you guys want to join us in two weeks, shooting on location, commercial lifestyle advertising in uh, the Virginia, Washington, D.C. area, we're flying in top models from um, Miami, New York, and LA. It's gonna be a massive scale production. It's gonna be commercial lifestyle and equestrian lifestyle production. It's an incredible experience. I'm super excited. It's one of my favorite workshops of the year. And this is gonna be something happening next week. If you guys wanna get involved, let us know immediately and we can add you to the roster. Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see you guys in person, having an experience of a lifetime and creating the greatest images you've ever shot in your career and help you take it to the next level. I hope you guys took away something and you can start increasing your pricing and making more money as a photographer.